right. So on background, we both start, we'll be really loud. Yep. We'll do exactly what Ed said. So we can, uh, and I actually you start doing pull the stomach, try to pull yourself, because, you know, your leg, you can't move your legs, it's sort of like a stomach problem. Okay. Okay, so I'm yep. gonna grab the phone like right. this, and then it's good. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna do this, right? Yeah. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to, uh, I'm gonna try to pull it off, and then. Yes. So now you got it. Now I know you got it, right? Yeah. And see, now the truth is, I don't even have to move my head. I'm looking right up at you right yeah. now, yeah. anyway. Yes, confirmed, you're moving. Uh, Ready? And action! That's a cut! It was very freaky for me because when you write a book, obviously a little bit of yourself goes into that character. And then when the actor plays the character, he is picking up what's in there. And so I was essentially watching Tom Cruise be me in a little bit of a way. And that was very weird. It was, he did a great job of playing the character, but those secret bits that I knew were me, it was just like he knew it was me too. And so I was almost watching not only the character, but myself on the screen. And I, I, I thought, yeah, he did a great job. He really nailed it. And the secret bits that only I knew about, he detected. And I was very pleased about that. I love that about, about movie audiences generally, that you're, 
you're doing something collective, especially in a large theater where there's a lot of you. Um, the collective intake of breath, the collective laugh, the collective shock. Um, I found that to be terrific. You know, what I had intended one person to feel uh, at a particular moment, suddenly a thousand people were feeling simultaneously. And I, yeah, I thought that was, it showed something was working. You know, people, a thousand people having the same reaction minute by minute, it was, it was working really well. I think she is so important, you know, the casting of Turner was so important because she in a way is Reacher, you know, she has his old job, she is him, she has all his capabilities, his experience, his intelligence, his uh, aptitude, she is the new version and so in a way he's meeting himself and he, she had to really understand that and, and really play it, otherwise it just wasn't gonna work. And so she was really the crucial part of the casting for this one. And uh, I was really happy when it was her, and I'm really happy seeing what she's doing. She's really nailing it. I've met women like this. I've met army women and uh, exactly like this, and she is doing a great job. I think the humor, Reach's humor is actually, uh, uh, there's more of it than people think. You know, he does have this deadly, dry, sardonic wit, and he was never particularly worried about the chain of command, and of course now he's out of the army, why should he worry about it at all? So he's perfectly prepared to take on a guy like Morgan and give him a real hard time. But of course, unfortunately, Morgan has the trump card up his sleeve uh, and, and, and wins that first encounter, which again is a huge emotional turnaround for Richard. Suddenly, he's, he's not in the situation that he thought he was, and he has to kind of start from zero and, and work his way out of a new problem. Patrick, in a way, is a sort of frightening thing for a book writer to look at because somebody once made the point to me that, of course, Reacher is my creation, but all the bad guys are my creation as well. So I'm looking at, at Patrick and I'm thinking, that character, the hunter, that is somehow part of me too. And he plays it to such chilling effect that I start to think, really, do I want to be that person? But evidently I am. This is not the same setting as the book, but uh, you know, New Orleans is incredibly cinematic. It's uh, full of interesting stuff. It's full of things that are already kind of creepy and dangerous in some ways. And um, you know, I know the production has exploited that tremendously. The, the physical geography, the the uh, the people in the streets, all that kind of thing are right there. I mean, it's a it's a terrific location, and it, it works great. He was very sensitive to the adaptation, but also bold about it in as much as exactly like I would want him to do. To do. And I remember having a conversation with him uh, right at the beginning saying, um, you know, do whatever you need to do. Because I firmly believe a, a movie is different from a book. It has different requirements. And therefore, Ed needs, needed to have the emotional freedom to do whatever he needed to do. So I, I wanted him to be very clear about that. And I think obviously he was. And then the script came out, and what really, really impressed me about the screenplay was how Ed has used this long, distinguished career that he has got. I mean, Ed is Ed. Uh, we know this. And he, he doesn't feel any need at all to, to say, hey, I wrote this. He's, he, he wrote a screenplay that is purely for the actors. I thought, what a generous screenplay. He's, he's just throwing it all to the actors, and the movie will succeed or fail based on those performances. So I felt it was a fantastically ego-free script, very generous in as much as he, he just throw in these great scenes for the actors. And um, I, you know, they, I assume they're loving doing it. It's, uh, I, it's what you get when you've been as good as Ed for as long as Ed, Ed has, I think. Yeah, the first movie was uh, a great movie in its own right, but it had a lot of weight to carry in that it was the first Reacher movie and it had to introduce Reacher to the, to the international audience, say this is who the guy is. Well, we did that. That's done. So now in this movie, we, the credits roll and Reacher is just as badass as he wants to be. He does not need to be explained. He, he's just 100 miles an hour through the, 
entire story be in Reacher. It's great to see. Action movie fans, 2016 is a great year for action movies. Some great titles have already been released, but there are still some awesome titles to come. The Magnificent Seven remake starring Daniel Washington, Chris Pratt, Ethan Hawke, Matt Bomber, about desperate townspeople who employ protection from seven outlaws, bounty hunters, gamblers, and hired guns. The next Jack Reacher installment, Never Go Back, starring Tom Cruise, which sees Reacher heading back to his old military base in Virginia and being charged with transgressions he can't remember. So in true Reacher style, he gets to the bottom of it with cunning and sometimes brute force. Ethan Hawke and John Travolta star in A Valley of Violence about a mysterious drifter who finds himself in a once popular mining town which is controlled by a brash group of misfits and nitwits. So do you think you'll be going to see any of these? If so, which one? Let me know in the comments below and remember to subscribe to our channel for all the best action movie trailer releases.